Hey guys, Dan Hood, Big DH2000 here. I'm getting a lot of questions recently about um, design and what I do and how I come about them and what I look for, what I've learned, things like that. Give me one second. Sorry about that. Remembered something else I wanted to grab before I got into this video. Uh, right now, a lot of people seem to be asking me questions about Ocularis plugs. I've, by now, you've probably seen my one video about Ocularis plugs. Um, the second question that I get a lot is the distance to the edge versus the hole. Okay. Um, you can see in some of my original designs, here's the template, okay? What I do is I create a template, okay? Um, this template assumed, I believe, one-eighth of an inch clearance. When you drill it correctly and clean it out, it'll be about one-eighth of an inch. The two holes here are the center of the Ocularis plugs. These are ones for the... For my pin and ones for the lanyard okay so when i originally did a lot of design for ocularis plugs i was using one eighth of an inch as the final clearance or the final thickness but you know by the time you sand it and clean it and everything that that one h gets to be pretty skinny and in aluminum and all it's fine but it just i don't know I just couldn't round stuff enough and I didn't didn't as much much care for it as much. So you can see on this bean flip, this has got to be at least three sixteenths, if not almost a quarter inch when it starts. You can also see that there's been grooves put in it uh, for you know when you pull it, let you see grooves on the band. It also gives places for the um, for the tubes to lie if you choose to use tubes. This was an addition Metrograde came up with for the Ocularis. Um, the big thing I took away from this was that I increased the thickness so that by the time I clean it out, sand all the outside, clean it all up, I end up with about 3 sixteenths. A little more sturdy, a little more stable. Gives you room to put a groove or two in if somebody wants to shoot a lot of tubes. You know, things like that. So that's one of the things that evolved as I was building. Another thing you work on is as you build, say you want to put a scale on this, you know, the scale has to fit, but it also has to leave room for the ocularis plugs. Okay. Generally what I've been doing is I've been putting about a quarter of an inch gap there, okay, between the hole and that, and that gives you room to get your ocularis plugs in and room to get in and clean sand. Um, it looks tidy, but at the same time, you'll see that, well, Dan, why'd you put these wings up? Are these wings stylish or something? Is that all you did for? No, because by the time you shape it and you go to try to grab it, if you don't have those wings up there and you don't have them smoothed out just nice and everything, it it doesn't feel as good here. Okay, it adds a little bit, it adds a little kind of, for lack of a better term, a little a little more curvature to land your hand in. So that's why I put them in the way they did. I did there. That's ocularis plugs. Okay, and design. Here's another one I've done, as you can see. So let me put these off to the side. Okay, then we come up to my old school designs, okay? Oops. These are designs I made that were wrap and tuck way back when. And it was all about, you know, you, 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 the less on the wrist, the closer you got to the bands, the better. But at the same time, you have to have a little bit of space to tie the bands, okay? And that gets to be kind of tricky. As you can see, even though this template has curves on it, when I do the final sanding, I flatten about a quarter inch up there so that we don't have the band tie sliding way down here. 
if that makes sense, okay? Um, it, it's it's a bit of a struggle. You got to find it. You got to have at least two straight sections. Otherwise, it's it's really hard to tie, um, wrap and tuck. At least not effectively to where the bands all pull at the same length, and you don't have one that's pulling a little longer because the band ties way down here somewhere. But anyway, old school right there. Okay. Toddy Mule. Okay. Toddy had was a big fan of tubes, loop tubes, any kind of tube. And what he liked to do is he liked to put a loop of tie through here, drop his tubes in, pull it tight so that held it, and then wrap and tuck. Okay. So he was basically, I've got a video on how he does that. So he put holes here. But he did leave a little bit of room here if you just wanted to do it old-fashioned wrap and tuck. So you got enough room to do that if you want. But definitely the loop, uh, loop tubes on this and then put that loop through there and tie those bad boys works great. Um, if I was to do this, if somebody called me and asked, say, hey, Dan, um, can you make me a toddy mule for flats? What I'd probably do is if I do put the hole in, I'm going to give them the binding post method that um, you'll shoot your eye out, Matt developed, okay? Or I'd make these probably about 3 16 inch longer, the two forks, just so that you have a little more room to do an old-fashioned rapid tuck. Um, through the fork mule, one thing I have learned is... I've never needed band grooves on an over-the-top shooter, okay? Only time I've ever needed a potential band groove is when I needed it on the side because the side was too curved or too sloped to get the band to stay in the right place, okay? That's the only time I've ever done it. Usually what I do, instead of putting that side groove on, I just flatten the edge a little bit so the wrap and tuck stays. Through the fork's a little different. Um, you don't have, you can't leave... You can't have something way, sticking way out here where you got enough room to properly wrap and tuck and that wrap and tuck not slide anywhere. So you end up having to put at least grooves on the top and the bottom. You know, I, I never find a groove this way is needed. Only this way and this way. And that's more to keep it from popping off this way or from sliding. Because you know when you wrap and tuck sometimes it slides if that thing isn't quite level. Um, with through the forks I found if I put a little little bit of stuff there it works well um, the beauty about the mule is you can also put binding posts in it and you can also use toddy's um, loop and tuck method obviously because he designed it um, then you start getting into stuff like this this can actually take an ocularis if i wanted to put it in but it would require me to get pretty close, once again, down to an eighth of an inch close to the edge, which I don't necessarily like to do. Um, and as you can see, it's a flat top. So you just, it's the same idea. If you look here, I'll hold, here's the other ocularis template right on top. You can see the only difference is one's rounded and one's flat. You still drill the holes the same and you do the everything else the same. Now, pretty soon you're going to see a video where I take this and um, I put um, tapered holes in. And you just use a tapered bit. They make several sizes. You can buy them super cheap at Harbor Freight or you can buy nicer ones at a variety of other stores. Your call, find the one that matches the taper of your silicone plugs and just polish in till you get it get the hole to the right size and the right set of slopes okay once again it's just a flat top nothing different and if you want to do a full flat top well then you just don't cut out the middle simple as that not much difference to that i've also done pins um these are for custom clips i've done the whole custom clip thing i've studied that i mean i don't know you can say anything you want, ad infinitum or whatever. Um, no matter how well you do custom clips, 
I've just been never been happy with the way the bands perform with them. Okay, personally, uh, first of all, it's very difficult to get the get all the holes drilled in the right place, even with a template. Okay, and a, a very expensive drill press. Now you could probably do a whole lot better with a CNC. You know, I'm not saying you can't, but by the time you get clips that work really well for, shall we say, any type of band, any type of tube, uh, you name it, okay, I mean, you, you could just go on and on, the clips get pretty bulky and pretty heavy to be able to handle all that variety. If you're just doing flats, you can do it a little bit better, and if you're using light bands, it's a little easier, but I've found that no matter how much you sand, no matter how much you do, that you need a little bit of roughness here to hang on underneath the clip, to hang on to the clip, to the, to the bands, and that little bit of roughness just rubs the bands funny, and I had a lot more tendency for it to break at the forks, the bands that break at the forks, and when that happens, you get slapped in the face by the bands frequently, and that's not a pleasant experience. So even though I still make the occasional clipped version of a slingshot, I just, I, I didn't much care for it. Um, I tried a lot of things. I just moved on. There's, to me, there's other options that are faster and easier or just as good. Now, the ultimate is if you want something really small, it is very hard to do a big clip or a custom clip or an ocularis plug. That's the beauty of the tapered silicone plugs, because you can get them pretty small, and the binding post method, okay? And there's also what some call, I, I can't, I think some call it toad in the hole, some call it otter method. Um, what that is, is you take a short piece of tubing, you ram an ammo up inside of it, and then you kind of use that almost like a silicone plug, if that makes any sense. And the more you pull it into the tapered hole, the tighter the ammo holds whatever you shove through and use. It's just like a modified silicone plug. You can buy the silicone plug so cheap and so, so many of them that it's easier just to do that method. But if it weren't for that, I mean, you can wrap and tuck on these if you know what you're doing, but you got to take a pretty small band. Um, or you have to fold over the bands when you tie them. It's all possible. Once again, it, everything is, you design everything. If somebody wants ocularis plugs, well, then there's only so much you can do for the size of the slingshot. If somebody wants binding post method, well, then you can make the slingshot really tiny or really big. Doesn't I mean, you got options, okay? And I just kind of Ask the people what they're interested in, and then are they interested in wrap and tuck? Are they interested in through the fork? You know, things like that. And it helps me narrow down what is feasibly possible to build for them that they could use and meets as many of their needs as possible. Last option is what I call what Carl over at Crack Pepper Slingshots refers to as the wave method where you wave the tube through. Um, it works best with single tubes, but you can do it with double tubes. Um, there's the option where you put it in the front, you leave a little groove for it to go over the top, you bring it through the back, and then you put it down a slot to hold it still. You can also do it through the top, out the back, through the front, and around into a slot as well. Okay, both options are possible. Both options work well. Both options are very quick to change. Uh, if you guys have seen a flat cat, um, a flat cat slingshot, it has a very similar concept uh, made by Alex. It has a very similar concept where you wave the bands through. It does flat bands. It also does um, tubes and you can kind of, you kind of wave them through and you lock them into little slots. Um, all making it real easy to change in the field. All you got to do is take a couple of bands that are pre-built, stuff them in your pocket. In the field, just pull one set off, throw it in one pocket, pull a clean set out, and put it right back on. 
Uh, you can do the same thing with the plug, Ocularis plugs. You can do the same thing with the silicone plugs and all that. At the same time, a wrap and tuck. You can just pull the bands off the old set that's broken and use that to wrap and tuck. It's not very clean looking, but it still shoots the same. Anyway, long video. Uh, some of you were asking questions. Hopefully this answers all of those questions and it doesn't bore you guys too much. Um, I suspect many of you won't even want to watch this video because you're not into design. You're just into shooting. Anyway, take care, guys.